With just over 60 days left for the Commission on Police Reform to report their ideas to the mayor and city council of Fresno, new controversy surrounding their vice chair, the CEO of Fresno Building Healthy Communities, Sandra Celadon, and that tweet where she said, quote, burn it down. All right, let's bring back our panel, Esmeralda Soria and Guillermo Moreno. And Guillermo, I want to let you have first dibs on this situation that's been brewing. Should Sandra Celadon have explained that burn it down tweet, or is her explanation of being on her private Twitter account that uh, used to be public was separate from her duties as vice chair now as she didn't want to talk about it during that public Zoom meeting? What's your take on that? I was just sad and unfortunate that she has risen to to this height with that type of comment. I think she should have explained it to everyone. If it were a conservative making a, a comment similar like that on some other committee, everybody would have been calling for their heads. So I think it's really unfortunate because it really just kind of puts the black eye on that on that committee. It's it's, it's pretty much no one's going to take it seriously now because she didn't explain it. So she should she should have explained it. But at this point in time, it just makes her and unfortunately the entire committee look bad. Esmeralda, do you agree with that? necessarily agree with that. I think that when we um, look at when other people are making, you know, these types of comments that I think it's been kind of hypocritical. Now people are going after the woman of color that made these comments. And so people are outraged and saying that, you know, oh, the commission's not going to be taken serious. At the end of the day, the commission her peers selected her to leave. It was, you know, we live in a democracy. And so they were well aware of what had, you know, um, been said and put out there. And so they still chose her to be the vice chair. What I will say, if we want to start going down um, the path of, you know, questioning people's ability to serve, let's start with our first, you know, some of our local elected officials that have made some comments that I don't agree with. Poverty pimps, going after um, folks, you know, in the African American community when people were kneeling down um, during the national anthem, um, when comments were made about gas tax dollars being spent in South Fresno, them being equal to reparations for African Americans. Those so, comments are coming from local leaders. And so where is the outrage and the questioning of elected officials you know, this is this is a uh, a community person serving in a commission, and so I say well, if we're going to. Well, so out. let me get to this. Let me get to this because, and I want to get both your takes on this. So, as you're looking then at this commission, is there some political posturing that's going on within the commission, or will this become real, true agents of change for police reform in Fresno? You know, I'm proud of the commission and the makeup. It's probably one of the most diverse commissions we've ever had in the city of Fresno. And I think um, if you saw the support that uh, it was unanimously supported by our entire council, I have confidence that this group will generate over the next 90 days a set of recommendations that our community can live with, but that most importantly are going to bring improvements to the community. We know that there is a need to continue to build the relationship and the trust um, between our law enforcement officials and communities, especially communities of color. And I think that this commission will do just that. Guillermo, Guillermo I'm going to start with you now because the mayor says this commission is really going to help them in police reform. Is, that, is this just posturing on all sides, though, or, or is this true? It's, it's posturing on every side, our side, their side. The reality is, I don't even think there was a need for this commission. Fresno does a pretty darn good job. But you compare us to other cities, our men and women in, do, in blue do a fantastic job. We're not like, we're not like uh, Minnesota. We're not like any other of these other big departments that have had issues. So I think at the end of the day, I think Jerry Dyer should just pick who the next police chief is as well. I, I think he got elected. He got elected at the first round. It's, it's really a, it's, it's really not needed, but whoever it's going to placate, if they want to get on the uh, on the commission and, and let their views be heard, that's so fine. So you're but saying the the, the, the commission should not be a part of the new police chief hire? Is that what you're saying, Guillermo? A a absolutely. Really, Esmeralda, your thoughts on that? Well, I think that community input is going to be extremely critical. Like anything, our police chief, um, 
you know, the position of police chief is one of the most critical positions in the city of Fresno. And I believe that community input is very important. You know, I pride myself in having community input at every level when decisions are being made locally, because I do value the diverse opinions that exist in our community. And I think that if you want community be buy-in and you want to continue to build on the trust, yeah, there's a lot of good that Fresno PD does, but there are things that when we examine closely that can be modified to improve. You know, constructive criticism is always good. All right, we'll cut it there. Guys, thank you so much for joining me here on Sunday Morning Matters. We'll continue to social distance, at least to this point, and I want to thank you guys for being here. Appreciate the time. Thank you so much. Peace. <laughs> Up next, a one on one with the commander in chief, his plans for another round of stimulus checks, and his controversial stance on the Confederate flag.